A card is selected, signed, and lost into the deck, and the magician catches one card from mid-air, hole-punching it onto a padlock. This is Card to Padlock and Card to Shoelace. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another tutorial video. Welcome back to the studio. Today I am going to be teaching you a few different tricks. So grab yourself a hole punch and some cards because this video follows on directly from my moving hole punch tutorial, which currently has, I think, 200,000 views, which is just mental. So thank you so much for the support on that video. And also, I want to start this video by saying hello and welcome to the more than 2,000 new subscribers that have joined the channel over the past couple of days. But without blabbing on any longer, grab yourself a padlock because the first trick I'm going to teach you is card to padlock. tutorial, you did hear me correctly in the intro. I said that the card could be selected and signed, and I'm not lying. These cards can be signed. Before we get into this, by the way, I do recommend watching that original Moving Hole Punch video. I think it explains the basics of the principle really well, and it leads on to the method of these tricks. But you can have these cards signed, which is something I never spoke about in that original video. And I'm sure some people have found this out for themselves, so long as you have a busy pattern on the front and the back. And so you can hide a hole in the correct position somewhere in the body of the court card. I can hand this to a spectator. They can sign the card. Remember, they're not looking out for a secret hidden hole flap. That is ridiculous. They're not looking out for that. They're just seeing a card and they're signing it. And so that is one of the things that I love about this trick now. And the good thing about that is they can go away with a souvenir of a card that they thought was intact to begin with, that you have somehow hole punched and looped onto a padlock without them noticing. So we will sign a card as an example and uh, show you what this trick would look like. The spectator signs a card and loses it somewhere in the pack and shuffles it up completely, losing their card somewhere in the middle. Now, you, the magician, explain that the spectator is going to spray the cards out into the open and you are going to try and catch their card, but in a bit of an unusual way. So I'll leave the pack there with their card somewhere in it and I need, I need a padlock because a padlock is what's going to catch the card, hopefully. So we have our padlock, we have our cards, and this is very difficult, but you catch one card, not only looped onto the padlock, but actually locked onto a padlock. The performance would look like this. You take the spectator's signed card, lose it into the pack really, really fairly, and then hand it to the spectator to shuffle. So they shuffle the deck now, completely hands off for you. And this is a fair shuffle. And then they hand the deck back to you. And because of that hole punch, it's actually done something to the card that makes it easier to cut to. This is a principle called uh, a crimp. So all I can, oh, in this case actually, it's on the bottom just by coincidence. So I'll cut it into the middle, we'll imagine it's in the middle. And uh, all I do is I riffle and there's just a slight, I mean, if I show you the edge of the deck, that black line right there, that's actually where the king is. So I can cut to the card straight away, just because of that hole punch. Because all the other cards are perfectly flat, as soon as there is any sort of imperfection on a card, you might notice this if ever you've used cards at a beach, if there's a bit of sand between the cards, there's this sort of gritty lump you can feel in the deck. And this is a similar sort of thing. When there's that slight bump on the playing cards, you can actually cut straight to their card, almost without thinking. You can just lift, and it'll most likely be at their card. Honestly, try it, it works. And what you want to do, actually, is cut it to the bottom, which is what I've done here. And once it's on the bottom, it is under your control, because now you're going to execute a gambler's cop. Because as that card is in cop and it's heading towards my back pocket, where the padlock is ready, I'll cover the padlock in a second, because it's actually in a specific position. As it's on this journey, I manipulate the card to my fingers and my thumb, and my thumb is going to push down. And you'll notice what that does is it pops the corner out of its, uh, the, the flap, sorry, out of its hole. And now with these fingers, all I do is I fold back 
and we're ready. As soon as we've opened that hole, you can do that with one hand. You just push with the thumb, fold back with the fingers. Obviously, the padlock at this point is unlocked, and the loop you want to put sort of at 90 degrees to the rest of the body of the padlock. And that loops over your back pocket like so, so that you have this metal strut ready. And with the copped card that you've manipulated to your fingers, you've opened the hole. All I do is I thread it onto the loop. And that is so quick. From the beginning, from a different angle, we take the signed card, we lose it into the deck, we manipulate it into a cop. The card is now copped, it comes backwards. As it does, I open up that hole. It takes less than a second. I thread it onto the padlock, I pull the padlock out, and as soon as it's in my grip like so, as soon as it's in my fingers, all I need to do with my thumb is push down and lock the padlock, and then I can mix the combination with my fingers. It'll be different for your padlock, so adapt this bit. This bit is not set in stone, because obviously every padlock is different. And then I bring out the padlock, and my other hand, my right hand, covers the card and grips the body of the padlock. And at this point, we are covered. We're covering the card, but we're holding the padlock. And there are many ways of doing it at this point. What you can do is dribble the cards and catch like so. And all I'm doing there is I just drop it out of palm, hold this at my fingertips, and it looks like I've caught their card on a locked padlock, which is such a visual moment. So the pocket variation is really, really difficult. I'm not going to deny that that is a difficult trick. There's a lot of work to do along the way to your pocket and on the way back to your pocket. And getting the padlock locked, yes, it's difficult. So I'm going to teach you a method that is much, much easier, and it uses the props bag. The props bag is a principle I absolutely love. When you're performing, it can be sitting down or standing up, you have a small bag next to you, which is your props. But what this really is, what this bag really is, is not a props bag, but a preparation bag. It allows you to prepare props by putting your hands into the bag fully covered, and you can do whatever you want. Obviously, to the spectators, it just looks like you're getting your next prop for your next trick, or a pack of cards, or a sharpie, or whatever it is you're going in to retrieve. But while you're in there, you can do some dirty work. I use this principle in a couple of tricks. Use it sparingly. I think if you're doing this with every trick, diving in and rustling around, it just looks weird. You know, often you will just use it to retrieve props, but every so often you can use that cover to do the preparation for a trick. So in this case, this is much more efficient, I think. Yes, it's a little bit dirtier because you have a bag next to you, it's a bit weird, but if you justify it well with other tricks and getting your spectators used to what this bag is for, it won't, it won't be as weird to the spectator. So you cop the card, and at this point, you uh, hand the deck away. Same deal, you're going to ask them to spray the cards, but now the dirty work, instead of happening at your pocket, is going to happen in the bag. So the padlock is ready. It's at 90 degrees, the loop is out in the open, it is in the bag. You reach in, obviously copying the card, no one's going to notice, you reach in, and at this point I simply grab both. And remember, we're in, we're in the cover of the bag here, so it doesn't matter, I don't need to be sneaky. I've done the work. In just that amount of time, I push with my thumb, I open up the hole, I thread it onto the padlock, and then I mix the combination just a little bit so that it definitely is locked. And then the same deal happens, I spread, I catch one card, it is their signed card. What a visual moment that is. I love that popping moment. While I know there are some magicians out there who will absolutely take the time to learn that out in the open version, and I think it is a lot more powerful because the props bag is a little bit iffy, uh, I think it's only worth mentioning the props bag version because I'm sure that technique will help people with other tricks. But also I think the props bag technique can also be good sort of stabilizers for your bike in a way. If there's a really, really difficult trick, the props bag is sort of a stepping stone. You know, you can still perform it in front of spectators, you can still do the same trick, but you don't have to do it quite as difficult. It removes the risk from dirtier tricks. That is card to padlock, a linking effect with a signed card. And the next trick I'm going to teach you is sort of a linking effect with a signed card as well, but it uses headphones or shoelace. I'm just going to be using this piece of shoelace. The technique is very, very similar. So. Obviously, you can use the behind the pocket one if you want, but I am just going to teach you the props bag variation. To begin with, what you're going to want to do is tie a knot 
in the shoelace and you want this to be a little bit past halfway. Um, so we have our signed card which I will re-seal, uh, we'll just use the same one, obviously the hole will be a little bit more obvious. Um, so we have the card here, we lose it into, where's the rest of the pack? So we have the signed card, it is lost into the deck and it is Control to the bottom, so I'll just skip this bit. It's on the bottom. Same deal as before, we control it to the bottom. Any control works. And at this point, obviously, we cop the card. We place the deck down. We ask our spectators to get ready to dribble those cards, or, you know, obviously check they know how to dribble before. And uh, then we dive into the props bag. Same deal, we push with our thumb. We fold back with the fingers. We get that hole ready. And this time, we're looking for the end of the string. So in the props bag, we quickly, and obviously that end of string should be in a really easily accessible place. So if there's a pocket for the bag, then wind up the rest of the string and have that end exposed so you can grab it and thread it straight away. Make it as easy as possible. Obviously your bag will be different. Pull it right the way through. And as you pull it right the way through, you find the little flap. You grab the flap as well and you pull. As you pull the string through, you pull that flap off so that you've completely torn the hole away. At this point, same deal as before, you palm the card, you grip the string like so, and you come out with the string. Now, you take the pack back from your spectators, and all you're going to do is this. That is all you're going to do. At this point, it just looks like I'm holding the string against the back of the deck. In actual fact, obviously, it's threaded through that top card. Now we cut the deck, and we say we're gonna put that string somewhere in the middle, and at this point, obviously, the trick is done, and uh, however you want to do this is okay. If you wanna spring the cards and catch one, I mean, that does look quite good. I will show you that version, actually. So you spring the cards with the string in the middle of the deck, you spring, and that is quite a dramatic catch of the card. They can see that it is threaded onto the card, and that knot is great, because it keeps it just from sliding down. <laughs> So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed some more ideas with the moving hole punch principle. And if you did enjoy it, make sure to click the thumbs up button down below. That really helps me out. And you can subscribe and join this growing community if you haven't already. Thanks again to all of the people who have subscribed this week. It is honestly crazy. My channel is currently having its best performing month ever. Um, so thank you to everyone that is, uh, is joining this. I just make videos because I enjoy them, as I say. And uh, if other people enjoy them as well, that is fantastic. So I think that is everything. I have got two more tutorials coming very, very soon to YouTube, an any card, any number prediction trick, and a triumph trick. So you do not want to miss those. Make sure to turn on notifications. There might be a little giveaway in the comments, and I will see you very, very soon.